Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, and I've been an avid tent camper for over 55 years. We're camped at the Greenbrier Campground near Gatlinburg in the Great Smoky Mountains. And I thought I would show you our new Eureka No Bug Zone 3-in-1 and share some opinions about it. First, let me show you our camp. Uh, there is our tent, and you'll see a line running there because we had a heater last night. It got down to around 50 degrees, uh, and we're expecting heavy rain today, so this will be interesting. And in the site next to us is my son-in-law, my wife's son, and his family. Uh, they're camped in our old Marmot limestone tent. And there is our Eureka No Bug Zone 3-in-1 kitchen canopy. We're expecting some rain today. And so I've got it guyed out just uh, very lightly on each side. You'll see I've got two side guy lines that go down to one stake. And before we leave today, I'll need to guy out the front and the back uh, because of the rain that's coming. This is an umbrella screen tent that measures 12 feet wide by nine feet deep. It is supported by four rigid steel roof poles that converge at a center peak hub and is held upright by four rigid side poles, one at each corner. Although the shelter does not come with sidewalls, I strongly recommend that you buy them for full rain, wind, and cold weather protection. In this video, I'll refer to the 12-foot sides as the long sides, and I'll refer to the 9-foot sides as the short side. One long side has a large entrance with zippers on each side. Other videos call this the front door, and I initially did the same, but later I realized that I should call it the large door. The second long side has a center zipper, and this side is frequently called the back door in other videos, but I think the better term is the small door, and it will be our primary door in future cool weather and rainy weather camping situations. Setup requires two people and is a little more difficult than suggested in other videos, but it gets easier after a few attempts. The problem is that the roof poles and the side poles will not stand in their correct position unless they are securely attached to the inner screen canopy. If they're not securely attached to the canopy, they will twist and flop away from the position they're supposed to be in and perhaps collapse. In a few reviews of this shelter, buyers have complained that the poles bent on the first setup attempt. And I'm convinced that the reason was that the eight roof clips were not properly attached before trying to set it up. So here are my suggested steps for setting up this canopy. First, zip all doors closed and spread the screen canopy on the ground with the short sides pulled tight and the long sides a little loose. Second, stake the corners to the ground but only drive the stakes halfway so that they can be easily moved if necessary. Third, spread the top of the canopy out and then gently put the roof pole assembly on top with the curved ends turned to the side so that they don't tear the netting. Fourth, attach the center hub clip and the two roof clips to each of the four pole roof poles in the roof pole assembly. Fifth, Note that each curved end is color-coded, either black or orange, and match them with the side poles of the same color. Sixth, with another person, start with the two poles for one long side. Seventh, insert top of side pole into the roof pole 
making sure that the spring locks into the slot. Then, insert the bottom of the pole into its pin. And then, attach the side clips. Step 8. Move to the opposite long side and repeat step 7. Step 9. Examine all four corner poles to be sure each one is in line with its corner seam of the canopy. If one is leaning, remove the ground stake and reposition the corner. The next step is to cover the inner screen canopy with a waterproof rain fly and then guide out securely. This fly provides additional stability for the shaky steel frame. On hot summer days, you can detach the screen canopy from its side and bottom clips and roll it up to make a nice sun shelter. Just be sure that it's well guide out first. To my knowledge, no other screen tent has this feature. You can use these top corner loops and toggles to hold the screen up out of the way. And finally, in rainy or cool weather, attach the sidewalls. So now, let me tell you some things I really like about this shelter. One of the reasons I was initially attracted to this shelter is because we have very little packing space available in our car, and this shelter fits better than in any other shelter on the market. It fits into a small space, and it only weighs 17 pounds. A second reason that I was initially attracted to this shelter is because it is one of the few shelters on the market that is fully waterproof, and we camp in a lot of rainy weather situations. During our recent five-day camping trip to the Smokies, we had three days of heavy rain and a total of over two inches, but not a hint of a leak inside our shelter. The third reason I was initially attracted to this shelter is because it has very nice fitted sidewalls that provide considerable comfort in cold, rainy, and windy weather. And we sure appreciated that comfort on this last camping trip. I like the rectangular floor print because it allows you to set the shelter up in small crowded campsites more easily than round or hexagonal shaped shelters. And the 12 foot by 9 foot floor provides enough space to set up a comfortable kitchen. I rolled up the front door so that you can get a better view of the way we've got our kitchen tent organized. On this right wall, I've got a, a three foot folding table and our Dutch oven table is stored under that table just to keep it dry but out of the way. And then we've got a four foot folding table where we've got uh, our plates and our pots and our uh, utensils. And you'll see I've got some pancake mix and eggs and milk and butter out because we're about to fry some bacon and make pancakes here in a few minutes. You'll also notice that I've got the sidewalls up because we're expecting rain today. And you'll also notice that I've got some string lights. Uh, I can turn them off now because it's kind of getting bright. That go across around two of the walls, one side wall and the back wall. On the other side, or in the middle, we've got room for two or three chairs against that back wall. And then we've got another four foot folding table, this one. And this one has a tablecloth on it. We've got a little cooler with our drinks on the ground up under it. And uh, you'll see this is kind of a utility table that we can pull out to the middle and use as our dining table if we wish. And uh, in this corner near the door is uh, my chair, the chair where I normally sit. The 7 foot 8 inch peak height allows 
almost anyone to be able to comfortably walk around inside the tent. And the last reason I bought this shelter is because I have owned three other Eureka tents and have been very pleased by their quality workmanship, technical support over the telephone, replacement of damaged parts, and free or low-cost repairs. So, what about bug protection? As I've mentioned in previous videos, we rarely have problems with mosquitoes, biting flies, bees, or any other bugs, and we had no problems with them on this trip. And so, I can't really comment on this shelter's bug protection. But my hunch is that if we ever need to close the mesh sidewalls to protect us from bugs, it will do the job just as well as any other screen shelter, if not better. And now let me mention a few limitations of this shelter. In my opinion, the most notable limitation of this shelter is its shaky roof and side pole clip design that makes it difficult to set up unless all clips are properly attached and the two side poles are carefully connected to the roof poles and the corners at the same time. Although two experienced people can set it up relatively easily, new buyers will likely have problems the first setup or two. The cost of this shelter is a second limitation. I paid $300 for the shelter plus another $100 for the sidewalls. Although the floor measures 12 feet by 9 feet, the roof only measures 8.5 feet by 6 feet deep, and this difference means that the shelter has sloped sidewalls, which reduces interior working space. But when you place your work tables around the sides of the shelter, you can maximize its limited workspace. One last small issue to mention is that the door height is less than six feet, so that many people, including myself, who are over six feet tall, will have to duck to get inside the shelter. In sum... This is a good kitchen shelter choice for camping families with limited packing space. It provides excellent protection from wind, rain, the sun's heat, and cold weather. But it is a little more expensive than other options and more difficult to set up. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this little video and I hope that you've learned something useful about camp kitchen shelters. For more information about kitchen shelters, please watch my other YouTube videos on this topic. Visit my website, moderntentcamping.com. A link is provided in the description below. Visit my Facebook page, Modern Tent Camping, and read my book, Basic Tent Camping. Thanks for watching. Well, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning, and we've got some heavy rain here, but we're snug as a bug and dry as a rug. Ava's got her jacket hanging up from the ceiling trying to dry it. We still have the light burning, although it's almost daylight. We don't need the lights anymore. There's Ava. Whoops, she's going to turn the light off. Thought I'd let you listen to the rain.